This is CNN FM, the financial network. Gross domestic product did jump an incredible 7.2 percent in the third quarter. That's what we reported yesterday. Had us all chattering all day long. But can the economy continue to expand at this rate? That's the big question now. David Edwards, president of Huron Capital Management, is here to take a look at the latest economic data and put it in context. What does it mean for the stock market and the average investor? David, great to have you back. Good morning, Kathleen. So let's start by looking at this number. Uh, the personal income up 0.3. Apparently, that was a little bit stronger than economists expected. You know, people have money to spend. Um, but in September, they didn't spend as much after spending a lot in July and August. Spending fell. And I, I uh, want to point out to our viewers that uh, disposable personal income, which is basically after-tax income, really strong in July and August, suddenly fell in September. So as much as I'm saying, you know, maybe we don't have to look at this report because we saw this strong spending number in the third quarter, if it tapered off in September, does that mean we're seeing the impact of the tax cuts fading already? I, I think there's just some smoothing has to be done there. Uh, there's been so much noise this year between fears about the war, why is the uh, unemployment rate not coming back around fast enough? I, I think the way I visualize it is the American economy is a giant aircraft carrier, and sometimes the course swings this way and sometimes it swings that way. It doesn't turn on a dime, that's for sure. Um, in aggregate, if you look over the last few months of economic reports, it all looks more positive, and you saw that yesterday in the GDP report. Really spectacular. Okay. So I, w I would think it's very interesting to look at the, the, how what the economy is doing in the context of the stock market because we can look at it in a couple different ways. We can look at it as workers. Now, as workers, what we see is that we, the labor market has not turned around. We had a blowout third quarter GDP, and the jobless claims are kind of stuck now around 380. There really doesn't seem to be a lot of progress there yet. Mm -hmm. But I guess you can have a really hot stock stock market even at a time when a fairly substantial number of Americans remain without work. Yeah, well, let's break that down a little bit. I, I think jobs have been created over the last six months. The problem is they've been created in India and China. Uh, you, you call Dell help desk these days, you get India. So that's, uh, that's one factor. We're exporting service jobs now as well as manufacturing jobs. Um, but then also the stock market is a discounting mechanism. It, it looks six months, 12 months forward. And what the stock market is anticipating is the earnings. Well, we, we saw a rally through the year based uh -huh. on the earnings of this most recent period. They were terrific. Uh, the stock market looks like it's going to continue rally mode through the end of the year. Um, next year, 8% gain. That would be a good thing. We're doing okay, okay in the economy, and it's being reflected in the stock market. Okay. Uh, so basically then the point is we can, unemployment could stay where it is. It's not going to necessarily impede the stock market's progress. I think that's what I'm going to take away from what you just said. So let's look at the stock market mm -hmm. because we're going into the end of the year. I think a lot of people are going to be saying, hey, even if that GDP number doesn't stay so strong, people like you are saying things are basically staying on track. They're happy to hear that. Now they want to know, okay, I want to put some more money back in stocks. So what areas should I be thinking about, whether it's individual stocks or mutual funds? What kind of stocks? What kind of mm -hmm. industries? Good questions. Uh, we, I was here in June, we were talking about uh, the stock market then, and it was about 40% undervalued. And I was banging the drum saying people ought to be in stocks. Yeah. Well, no, it's not so easy to, to make the same statement. The, the market's undervalued, and maybe we'll talk about that later in the segment. Um, but I if you're holding some cash, and if you're thinking about buying stocks right now, what you have to look at is not the stocks that have the most this year, which have been uh, large cap technology stocks and internet stocks, those okay. are, are doubled in many cases, you have to look at the stocks that have underperformed. And what's intriguing me right now is the uh, the major pharmaceuticals, the shearing plows and Pfizer's you were and just Merck's. Gonna, we were going to show the Merck chart. Now, come on, Merck stumbled. Merck, not enough drugs in the pipeline. Right. Merck just announced we're laying off 4,400 workers. Bunch, That's the price. It's I got thought a Merck bunch was... of bad news out right now. Yeah. It's trailed the S&P by 30% over the last year. Uh, People are fleeing out of it uh, because of the bad news about the pipeline, but also because uh, Merck and Pfizer are flight to safety stocks when times are tough, right. money coming out of that sector sure. and going into uh, the growth sectors again. And so you say, all right, if you're going to be a contrarian, if you're going to buy what everyone else is selling, what's attractive about Merck right now? And you look at the PE trailing 13, PE forward 13, growth rate forward 8.5%. Profit margin, 20%. Dividend yield, 3.5%. That's a good stock to have, and it's terrorist-proof. If the terrorists wipe out, you know, another target, 
Merck is not going to get clobbered. You really got me thinking on that one, because I saw that in your note when I was uh, getting ready for this interview last night, that you were in, um, recommending drug stocks. Um, you you want to talk something about undervaluation, overvaluation. Mm -hmm. what, what's the point there, David? What, what should people take away from that? Valuation, they kind of go, okay, it's one of those like wonky words. So what are we, oh, there's the Merck chart finally. Look. Uh, yeah, there's uh, you know, a, a total collapse since, uh, since July. Yeah. 50%, uh, so uh, 35%. And you go, all right, is there some value in that in that stock there that uh, we can take advantage of? And I, I'm buying it for my clients right now, so that's my okay. opinion. Okay, you're putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah. That's good to know. Uh, overall, valuation, yeah. Overall valuation. Uh, we talk about the Fed model a lot. Hopefully we can bring that chart up. Uh, sometimes stocks are priced richly because people are expecting the moon from the internet era. There we go. Um, th that huge peak there, that that's uh, now what is that, rep that represents the S&P 500 as of uh, March 2000 when it hit the all-time right, high. Right. Okay. Okay. The lower white line is the fair value, and that's um, based on the Fed model. That's based on relative interest rates, relative earnings expectations. Okay. So it there's a lot of noise in it. It's a it's monthly data points. You can't day trade off of it. Okay. All right. But it gives you a kind of a green light, yellow light, red light read on. The, uh, the stock market, and boy, yeah. back when that yellow line was diverging sharply from the white line, people were dumping money into stock like crazy. And back when the yellow line was plunging below the white line last summer, they were taking stocks, uh, money out of stocks like crazy. And what does that mean? They, they, they bought high and they sold low, and they didn't have any sense of what they were doing. Okay, we, we gotta go, but I just want like one more area or one more kind of company where you're, we've got like a Merck-type model where I'm gonna get a good, a, a low PE, but good, good profits, good growth, et cetera. Shearing Pio, Pfizer, those are all good. Own them all. Okay. Well, David, I'm going to uh, call my broker right now. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks Thank so you. much, David Edwards. This is CNN FM, the financial network.